So you have the tools which, you know, really make the difference between big companies and small companies today. And this is the name of the game, the tools. And, and to apply those tools to simple daily lives and to, to come to the to, to point where you just press a button and it does it all. And you don't have to mess up with a lot of things, but this is your day. You, you just need like a simple thing. Don't bother me about the, you know, bombing names like AI, artificial intelligence. Just give me the, my, my daily plan, the perfect one, the most efficient one, and alert me when things go wrong before they go wrong. Welcome back to another edition on Mentory TV. I'm Patricia Falkobekali, your host. And as you know, I started to feature a little bit some of our portfolio companies in my investment company called Falco Global Partners. And not too long ago, we invested in the logistics sector. You might think, oh, what? Logistics sector? Why would you do that? It's one of the most amazing and I have to say transformational sector that is happening right now. It's all going digital and not only digital, it's all going artificial intelligence. And this is why we invested in Amphorica, an Israeli-based software as a service company. They look at logistics powered by AI. And today I have the co-founder and CTO with us, and Raviv Yatom. Thank you so much for joining me here on Mentory TV to talk about what it's all about and why we as investors are so excited about logistics powered by AI and why you as entrepreneurs are as well. Welcome. I'm, I'm so thrilled and excited to be here. Um, this is a great honor. And the way you put it out is also so amazing. I, you know, I just like, I was, <laughs> I was so excited about it. And thank you so much for inviting me here. Um, I hope we have a, we're going to have a great hour here and I'm looking forward to it. And thank you for investing in us, by the way, that I'm very thank thankful for that. And it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. It is our pleasure. We being, you know, operational investors, we are hands-on involved helping to make this a huge success, which it deserves. And not only because this is a eight trillion trillion US dollar business, globally speaking, but um, because it is just so much happening in terms of good stuff in the logistics sector. I mean, everybody goes like, okay, logistics moving one good from A to B, maybe having to go past uh, another you know, standpoint. So what's the big deal? It's a huge deal. It's about time. It's about money. It's about damaged or not damaged goods. It's about efficiency, agility, and to make it as smart as possible. And this is why, um, Rabif, I'm so excited to have you as a CTO on the show, because I would like to talk about the application. Let's let's forget about what is AI, you know, is it here anyway? Is it not machine learning, augmented intelligence, or authentic intelligence? I, I don't know. But let's talk about something that sounds abstract, is real, and how it is applied. Talk to us about that. Where are we right now? So, so you know, we all know about logistics and how much it hurts us every day and how much, you know, we depended on it. Napoleon was talking about it in early days. And, and, and we all see the rise of AI. You know, I, 20 years ago, I kind of decided that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus my energy on, on AI and I'm going to become an expert on that. I saw, I saw, I kind of saw before what's going to happen. I, I saw the potential of AI to help us in our everyday lives. And we see today, we, I don't have to explain to you, you know, we, we see it all over from our spam mail, from, uh, from uh, ways that helps us, from sky scanner that helps us pick up flights, from wherever, everywhere we see it. And logistics is kind of stuck behind uh, in a way. Um, it's almost like, you know, the, the people who work at logistics work, work really hard. They actually move around all day and 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 they they actually they are the ones who need the, these tools to help them manage their days or plan their days or or manage their companies in a way that can be much more efficient than it is today. And the reality is that uh, because those tools are so complicated, the real challenge is how to bridge these tools with the people who really need them 
in a way that maybe they won't even see the tools. It'll just be behind their life and help them manage their life in more efficient, more profitable, less mistakes, um, and everything, everything that can help them manage a lot of variables. And we are, as human beings, we can perceive so many variables. I can, for, for example, three, most of us can seven probably. And, and the idea that you can really solve Sudoku problems, like everyday Sudoku problems, which this is really how logistics is. It's kind of a Sudoku, which when it's small, it's easy to manage, but when it grows up, it's very complicated and it's very dependent on a lot of variables. And this is exactly where AI can get in and work out the right plan at the right time. And, and it, it, I think if I, yeah, if, I, if I may interject there, Robin, what I like about what I'm hearing, it seems that guys don't get kind of like, oh my God, this is complicated. It's AI, it's technology, it's data analytics. It's nothing but a tool. All right, to make your life easier. And I think us as investors, we've seen or we do see digital data, uh, AI analytics and whatever comes out just as a tool to make my life easier, be it as a private person or be it in my sector as a professional. Exactly, exactly. And, and, I, and I think we live in, a, in an amazing age where you know it's all it's all evolving and we have a great opportunity now to get in and and the, I think we have, we have a window of 10 years I estimate of of AI everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> AI everywhere we, I'm talking about music, arts, I'm talking about finance which is already like heavily based on AI anyway 85% of the finance is done by AI already. Um and and I think we have to accept it. And well, we, we are, aren't we? Let let us take take a detour um, to let's say Netflix. Yeah, uh, I don't want to get into Google search, but Netflix, everybody can relate to it. So the program learns my patterns. What do I like to watch? Do I like splatter movies? Do I like sensual movies? Do I like family comedy? What have you? And every time I go through my list of suggestions, it tells me the algorithm, the AI system tells me it's 90% of what you like. Now, do I really? How do you know? Well, because I moved and you read me. And every time I move, you as a machine, you capture me, right? So you make it then easier for me to find the right choice that will hit right. all my right. triggers to make me happy, right? Right, right. We all remember those days when we said, wow, how come YouTube, you know, brings me all this amazing tours and 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 honestly in logistics we're talking about things which are much more simple you know and much more much more on the ground you know where we're how do, how do i load my trucks in the best way how do i plan these you know days of of scheduling and jobs in the best manner and what we see is that a lot of companies still use excel sheets to run their plannings and and they're using like, you know, they're trying to manage their daily lives by, you know, by uh, turning off fires instead of, you know, strategic thinking and not collecting the data of finance and, and operations and, and also quality assurance or customer service and putting them together and maybe see what happens between them. And, and we, we see that, you know, all over the place, there are like big companies who have a lot of technology and a lot, a lot of small, medium players who are very, you know, dependent on Excel, basically, still. And, and I, I, I see myself as a messenger for, the, for these companies to come and allow them to get grasp on, on their operation and be maybe much more efficient than the big ones. Um, because they're actually tools. through the size, they're even more agile right, than the big ones right, in the right. implementation of it, right? Exactly. So you have the tools which you know really make the difference between big companies and small companies today. And this is the name of the game, the tools. And and to apply those tools to simple daily lives and to, to come to to the point where you just press a button and it does it all and you don't have to mess up with a lot of things. But this is your day. You, you just need like a, a simple thing. Don't bother me uh, about the, uh, you know, bombing names like AI, artificial intelligence. Just give me the, my, my daily plan, the perfect one, the most efficient one, 
and alert me when things go wrong before they go wrong. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, plug and play. That's the solution. So let's get a little bit more specific then mm-hmm. because we're talking about tools. Okay, everybody goes, okay, so what tools? Okay, it is simple. Let's not bomb anybody with the AI. Let's have a look and be specific what you actually do for the clients you already have. Um, you let's, let's have a peep into the program, into the system that you coded, by the way. You are the, the great inventor and you're curating it and you are the one also continuing to develop it as the Uh, you know, Amphorica also continues to learn from its customers, clients, or partners, as as you call them. Sure, sure. So let me take you through some some of the tools that we do, like actual uh, uh, samples that we have with uh, with our clients. And uh, so this this one is a is is an interesting scenario. This is a scenario where you have lots of bulk, big bulk of shipments that you have to do. Uh, to spread out this time it's uh, for all of the United States and we're talking about thousands of shipments and you're a you're a logistic company and you need to estimate the cost of this process now there's you have to go from New York Harbor to all over the states and spread your uh, goods and and you need to give a quote or estimate how much will it cost you and you also need to know how much profit you make because you It's a low margin business and maybe you can lose money on doing so much operation and it happens it happens it actually happens you know you see it can happen you can if you don't uh, do the costing right it can happen easily a lot of people can work hard deliver a lot of stuff and you don't make the profit so so actually what you do is you calibrate your your projections in terms of uh, how much you want to price your 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 work in terms of cost per mile you estimate your cost per mile of your uh, of your flea and also price per delivery of of your deliveries to a point where you're satisfied with your profit margin so so you you actually do that but that's excellent let me just bit backtrack there so what I'm seeing is here me as a business I look at Amphorica and I see hey if I do you a uh, number of shipments in this amount of time or that kind of value my profits getting from a to B will be 43.98 percent ie I do know if I follow this kind of um, let's say puzzle being put together I can calculate my margins correct and and not not only that you have the plan you have the whole plan how to do it also also you And also you have the f- fraction to a level that you pay each driver his separate you know his separate justified salary you know for this kind of job so oh, is you, this how granular it goes so it's not the complexity of however many drivers I have but that so, particular driver will earn this and that or can earn exactly. this and that and I can adjust and also will drive this path right and wow. also will, and 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 that, that that is the power of you know that that is the power of, of massive computation and computation and then uh, an AI to do those jobs behind the scenes and to allocate those jobs and this if a human being would have had to do that how much time would it take to him can you estimate like yeah maybe, I don't uh, think anybody would be able to do that never mind I mean that's even only planning just imagine this being a real time and kind of adjusting to real right, time moments right. as well right right so 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 this is just an example. It's not, it's not, it's just a branch of, mm-hmm. of, of the things we do. And, and, but, but it gives you an idea of how much work is involved in it behind the scenes, how much agile it can be to moving prices or to, to the point that you want to be. And it gets you to a point where you can become much more resilient than you are. And, and, you know, confident, you, you, you now understand. And also you pay the drivers by their effort and not just by, you know, a global rate, which may, you know, be painful for some of them. And, you know, for long term, they will leave the company or whatever. It's hard to get drivers, by the way. It's mm-hmm. a challenge to get drivers. It's not, it's not a simple thing. Um, and also the cost of your fuels and whatever it is, it's, it's, it's into the cost per mile that you have in your equation. But, This is all allocated and this is one example of, of how we can do that. I'll give you another example which is also something that wow. you know, mm-hmm. is, is I think very missing in the, in the industry. What are we looking at? We're looking at the dashboard and you know when, 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 I, when I say dashboard think about the car you know about the dashboard of a car you, you run a car you run a business right and you want to know 
you know what is important in, in in terms of running the business forward and this this dashboard is you know updating daily monthly weekly in terms of how you want to it to update but the idea is a business owner that you hold the wheel and you also see where the business is going and and this is so vital why it is so vital and everybody underestimates like bi in terms of but it's so important for a business to know where it drives to and what we do is before even we start to touch AI, we start to figure out uh, co- and correlate between money, between finance, between operations, between all the shipments that you do, all the, all the cities that you, how many shipments you did to every city, um, the types of shipments you're doing, um, and also quality assurance. You want to know that you have a damage rate which is below a level that with the certainty you also do um, a benchmark on your suppliers. This is a very important stuff that may from the beginning eliminates a lot of problems and you may throw away the, the suppliers that do damage. Now, this is a thing that you can't see if you don't do this, uh, this triangulation of information. These you analytics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't bring those analytics now, we, this helps us a lot with our customers because going going forward, it's almost like a scoreboard, yeah. and, and it gives it, it gives the customer the idea of how much money he saves, and and it gives us the idea of how much we can help him. And going forward, we see ourselves as giving our service free and charging only what we save for the customer percentage of it. For, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. You know, how do you price your uh, right, the, right. The, the way that you go forward with your clients? And I think this is uh, that what you just read in my mind, Ravi. I wanted to ask, you know, because you're talking about you have the big logistics companies, the big uh, companies that produce something like I don't know Heinz baked beans, and they've got billions of cans they're sending around the world every day. But then you also have the small and medium sized uh, companies that have to ship or that do logistics. How small? can I be in order to make Amphorica work for me and increase my margins? So can I be a, you know, mom, pop, a couple of kids, five people, uh, entrepreneur type of family business in order to still or already see value in Amphorica? So uh, it's very dependent on the way you're saving your data. And if you're collecting data, which means if you're doing paperwork, I think there is no chance that we can work together anyways. We won't spend time on that. Um, but if you do have like a system which is already in place, which does the finance, and you have the system already in place, which does the operational part, and you also have a system which measure your success in, in a way that could be like service success or uh, any other success in that term or, or service, we can already start to work with you by doing like these kind of basic elemental uh, dashboards that can help you. And I firmly believe that can help uh, improve your business by far. Now, when we talk about AI, that needs more data. So when talking about AI, we're talking about the thousands, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and up. When you're talking about the hundreds, usually it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna shine. That's the word. The AI is not going to shine. You know, it, it shines in the thousands. And... Well, it shines with the data, I guess. It, right, it, the, right. You know, the, the more, more you it, give it, the more it displays, right, 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 right in value. Right. So that's kind of a, a way to, to look at it. And if you already have an ERP system in place, that's very good because we're not coming to, uh, to put your ERP systems away, for sure not. Uh, we're going to work with the ERP, already existing ERP systems in order to... To, comp- to add this AI um, uh, taste, let's say, or... A- well, it's, it's like, it's almost like it's not AI yet that you provide at that point, <laughs> simply because the data lake you find with a smaller company just doesn't allow for the amount of data to really have a sophisticated calculation at the end. But what it does, it paves the way, I think, the runway uh, of data that you can already analyze that gives you an indication on how to you know, run your business, as you were saying, more efficiently. And I wonder, Raviv, how then one, once 
I have, let's say, as a small business, Amphorica established, and I give it the EPR system, I give it the access, the implementation is, is uh, I think, also a fairly quick solution. I give it the data on what I'm doing in terms of money transfer. I just need to maybe find a way of how to feed in weather conditions or traffic conditions or, you know, my HR system on a more sophisticated base in order to have that grow in general and grow on me as a business. Is right. that something, is that, is, is that captured right? Or, you know, it's like a starting point for whatever we have, you're digital already, even if it is not on a, you know, high level, but there's enough for Amphorica to put its claws into it and make it into something that is incredibly sleek, agile and efficient. Correct. Correct. And, and, and for, let's say for the small businesses, it'll be more like, you know, in the thousands and it'll be more like dashboards and planning kind yeah. of uh, algorithms. But for the big corporates, we can already, uh, already give like algorithms that will, let's say for, if you want to uh, understand cost processes or should cost how much should cost uh, the that's the most period. important thing i always find it sorry to interrupt there is like okay how do we price how do we price the product best because of course you want to find the sweet spot which when you are in a disruptive industry it's very difficult to find what will the customer pay for a system that's not even that known they might not even be aware of or it's just a nascent kind of industry right right but 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 oh. But I think that in their data lake, they already have some, some, you know, a lot of samples that are very like, in a way, you know, and it's all combinations of, of historical phenomena that probably happened before in the organization, and nobody knows how to pull it, and only AI can pull it out, and adding to that is all the things that happen behind the scenes, like interest, fuel prices. Hmm. Whatever happens, you know, commodity prices that change all the time, and we see it, we see it today. Now, AI is agnostic to these things. You know, it just helps it. You know, it, you know, it just bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. It'll know how to filter the fi the features, the right important features, but it'll it'll help it. So weather uh, is definitely going to be part of the business uh, for sure. Conditions at ports, whatever you can collect in order to to magnify your estimations. That, that the more is better in that term. And and humans are the opposite, you know, they just rather like three parameters and to choose what, what's right in that term. And this is where, you know, where I think is gonna be a, a huge change. And if you want to, let's say, um, demand, predict your demand, and which this is something that everybody wants, right? Yeah. Uh, how much load am I, gonna, am I gonna be next week? How many people do I have to, you know, recruit? And, and that's that's like a huge thing and and you have this is perfect for AI yeah yeah and and in terms of you were mentioning it before you know the profitability gains by implementing this can you actually put an average on it if you say can can one um, considering you're looking at different size of businesses even though it is in the logistics sector can you say that hey with Amphorica, even with you know the minimum amount of data, usually margins can go up by X? So the industry is talking about like, what do I see in the industry and what do I, we also see from the data, it's talking about like between 10 to 30%. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe it can be much more because um, there are two parts, two sides to the coin. One is saving money, but the other side is, you know, working differently. And this is something that, you know, we don't, it's hard to percept it because you know you you don't you don't think yeah. about a game changing like strategies or everything and and take the famous games of the go games or the chess games that you know computers used to play against games against like people and and from time to time you know people were looking at what the computer was doing and they said what is he doing this is like out of the game it's not it's, it's against the law you know it's, mm. it's stupid and like maybe 10 10 moves after that everybody is like Oh, we, 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 we don't know chess, you know. Uh, <laughs> yes, no, no, we didn't see it coming. And I think this, we don't know. this part is really exciting. It's the predictability part of it, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. it's the predictability and the creativity part of it. It's also the cre creativity part. So new, new methods of doing things differently. 
and and it's it's hard to think about it but that's going to happen you see uh, this, this is interesting the creativity this is the first time i actually hear that in the context of ai and that in me in my layman mind that we've sparks that only an ai system can actually put the data the the huge complexity of data together in different ways to shape different outcomes no matter what let's say metrics uh, i put in saying okay these are my pain points please algorithm tell me how to deal with it with the data you have and you analyze but there's some there might be also some different solution which i have not thought about exactly. which is in the creative part exactly 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 and 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 you look at open ai at projects like dali i don't know if you're familiar with it but check that it's it's a beautiful project and it's about arts basically ai doing arts and it's like mind blowing you know it's mind blowing also music talking about like music creation and and i think you you have to you know some people say it's the soul and you know but i think it's divine It's divine. You know, everything is cre that is created is basically divine yeah. and it, it has the right to be out there. So and I'm sorry, I'm going deep into that. But I, I honestly believe that creativity is going to be one of the things that AI is going to bring in the, into the table and new things of doing. So when talking about like the side of the coin, which talks about savings, okay, 10 percent, 30 percent. But I think there are going to be like game changers, which are like creativity, doing things differently. And you know, building different different methods or or strategies of, and just looking at you know supplier buyer relationships today, and how much potential can be there. You know, when you look at you know the the point that you can reach, I think that you know just from that perspective, it's going to be like a... exactly, exactly. I think this is also one thing that fascinated us, and I think this creativity uh, is not only when one thinks about creativity is uh, like arts. Yes, it is, of course. But I think finding solutions, be it in whatever sector, they need to be kind of different. Like, like Einstein said, where, you know, madness, the definition of madness is, you know, to do the same things over and over and expect a different outcome. No, you want a different outcome. So you have to put the puzzle in front of that outcome in a different way. And what, what fascinated us uh, in, in high tech and deep tech in general um, as investors is, You know, in, in um, let's say, MedTech, for example, it is only thanks to algorithms that we can do remote diagnostics, that somebody can operate somewhere, you know, in Asia, and I have an oncologist here in Europe or in Germany looking at what is happening there, uh, you know, through the systems and how, having an AI system to identify a cell that was pulled out, uh, you know, by a pathologist to say yay or nay, that could be, uh, you know, malignant uh, in terms of a cell. And that is, I think, the creativity part of it. That's life-changing and that's life-saving. And, and uh, I'll give you another example from my past experience. I was, I was very passionate about air quality. And uh, my, my early startup was, my last startup was about air quality measurements. And I built a device and an IoT system that reads this device to, and you pull it out in, in the cities and, And you find out what is the best route to take your jogging or yeah. whatever it is. And, and I sold this start startup to a Fortune 500 company called Perkin Elmer, mm -hmm. which, you know, thankfully, uh, I worked with them for three years and it was an amazing experience. And the edge AI part of this like whole project was the idea of calibration. And, and nobody could do this calibration. You know, it let me get you into this world of air quality. All the monitors are so huge today. They're like maybe like a, a container size and you it's a very hard to, to minimize them but you have a lot of technologies that come from the automotive devices that measure the gases in the chamber and also new uh, nanotechnology that came out that that can separate and distinguish between gases now nobody could understand how to formalize between these like sensors And the readings that need to get like air quality readings, like ozone level, CO2 level, um, which is like the environmental measurements. And what we did in this in the startup, which was really amazing, we gave the AI the task of doing that. We were putting our stations near the reference stations for a very long time in a lot of places in the world. And we told the AI, okay, now figure out how to make this not so smart hardware become much more smart than it is 
by, you know, by doing the algorithms and putting a lot of sensors together. And the AI created those, you know, equations. And this is what made like a thousand dollar hardware become like a, a worthy $100,000, basically. And this is like giving the AI this challenge of, 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 of calibrating gases is almost like an impossible challenge. But the AI was able to do that. And, and when you let go, and you're not you're not trying to solve the problem yourselves as a scientist as as whatever you are you know and you give the AI the ability to solve it for you it's an amazing uh, liberation. and this is what you said right at the beginning of our conversation it's like a higher power you know it is like a better human without taking us humans out of the equation I think this calibration right. this fine tuning and 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 the real time of it is what we as humans uh, are hardly ever capable of but we can have the help the tool. Exactly, exactly. And it's just to embrace the tools. This is, you know, and I'm, I'm embracing it for 20 years and I'm still like, my mind is blown up every day from the things I see that it can do. And yeah. and, and one of my missions here is to, to bridge these tools to, to people that can use them for their daily lives and the companies that can use them for better profitability, better efficiency, better service. Yeah, no, and I love, you know, and I, I think everybody, if you break it down into everyday life, we are full of gadgets. These days, if I lose my wallet or my handbag, that's okay. If I lose my iPhone, I've lost like 80% <laughs> of my life, honestly, <laughs> you know, and it is as silly as that, that really, as you were saying, it's engulfing us everywhere. But coming specifically back to also the partners you have as Amphorica, um, in the logistics sector, smart logistics is your tagline um you know what is the biggest resistance you can actually see because for me as a you know as an investor and somebody who, who loves technology and wants to have that tool wherever i can have that enhancement what would you say is the biggest kind of question mark or where people are going oh my god this is too much money or is it is it just too hard to implement or i have to learn yet another you know operating system on my computer what is what are the challenges and the resistance here so first of all, you know, it changes. It also changes. You know, what was like maybe before the COVID now is different. Yeah. So, so it changes. You know, if, if you would ask me like two years ago, what I would give you like another, another answer, but it changes because, and also, and I, and I also feel people embrace tools. You know, we, once everybody has a smartphone today, it's a big change, right? Mm -hmm. It's a huge change as well. And the COVID also, it, it made a change as well. The remote work, the, the acceptance of technology into our life, the, I think it changed. And, and, and I think right now people are much more embracing than they were before. And that's why it's a, it's a great timing. I actually don't have a lot of resistance uh, today. The only resistance is the ability to live their daily worries and, and, the, and, and, you know, make some available time or for for a new tool. This is the the main challenge because they're so busy with their like daily tasks um, and and the daily operations. So those who are like, and and the, the sad news the the sad news is that those who would not embrace it would not. Oh, they're left behind. Yeah, that would not sustain. You know, and this is the sad news, and because it's really hardworking people, my heart is for them. You know, it's not like the it's. It's people who work hard, who really, you know, we see them on the roads all, every day. We see them. They're not like the high tech shining people. You know, they, they actually do. They move our bread. They move our. our exactly. Our and maybe they healthcare. will be blamed. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe they will be blamed for the packages to be damaged. And it wasn't even them. So right. they have yeah. a hard job. And right. they get the hard right. side of the they stick, right? It's always like blames that they get. Always like bad service and always like. And, 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 and they carry the weight of the logistics of our daily life. And, and especially healthcare is, is a huge part of it. And, and, and people, I think that they embrace it more. If you ask me now before, like two years ago, then I would say, ah, technology, leave me alone. You know, I, don't, uh, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> don't do. and, and now I think it's, oh, uh, I've got, I, got, I, got, I got to get these tools somehow, you know. I, and and the, this is kind of the answers that I hear more and more. Is it like... Um, how can we how can we work together like 
do I have enough data? This is the first question, right? The, the first question. Do I have enough data? The people apologize, apologize for the way they run the business. And this is a, and you have to be transparent in order to succeed. You know, you have to say, okay, this is what I have. This is the situation. I'm working on Excel. I'm sorry. But this is a good start, by the way. This is a good start. And this is always what I tell the customers. Yeah, in that sense, I mean, perversely enough, you know, COVID and also now the Ukrainian-Russian uh, war is putting smart logistics and AI power logistics really uh, at a sweet spot. We have supply chain issues. We have bottlenecks. We've got prices going through the roof for containers to be shipped because, of course, energy prices are going up. And we are seeing Seeing, not only in the underdeveloped worlds, but even in our Western worlds, you know, empty shelves. And this is where logistics breaks down. And when it is not efficient, uh, and if there aren't any tools, then, you know, these, these uh, shelves that are empty might not be filled up. And this is where even I want to say me, any kind of Joe Block starts to understand, hey, there's something behind the scene that is just not living up to what it could potentially be. For sure, for sure, for sure. And you see it every day, like uh, in, in our lives and for sure. And, and, you know, when you're talking about e-commerce and the load on the roads, this is a huge part, right? People used to buy like shoes and go to the mall, you know, you used to, you used to have one truck going into the mall and, and then later people would go and collect it. Now all the shoes are going into the, on the roads, right? <laughs> and the roads are filled up with like, different you know it's not contained anymore as it used to be and yeah. and 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 i think that you know the and we see it you know, you know i drive these days and it's i don't know how it's uh, in switzerland but after the covid here in israel it's a nightmare i don't know i i, I can't explain it but something has changed mm. what it took it takes Two times the, the yeah, the, everybody's kind of catching up on the driving. They weren't allowed to do <laughs> what they're like. Okay, I can drive again. Yay! <laughs> what the hell? No, no, I get it. You know, but but coming back to to what I hear also from one of my um, other investment companies, it's a it's a fintech company, Sanostro, and they are dealing and supplying uh, trading signals for hedge fund, hedge fund managers sourced from hedge fund managers. So it's quant trading. It's absolutely fantastic, and it shows you the flow of funds, and it gives gives you as an asset manager an additional input how you could or could not read the markets going forward because a the algorithm tells you more or less without front running of course mm -hmm. uh, where things may be going and the biggest resistance there is to a is the ego oh no 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 our asset management system the you know the way we installed it uh, is good enough thank you very much so it's ego Mm -hmm. you know? And the other one is, oh my God, just another system. And how easy is it really to install? How long, you know, how much data do I have to hand over? How can I plug this in without having a disruption? I cannot afford two or three trading days not doing or following the stuff whilst you're implementing it. Is that different with Amphorica? It's not that different. I have to say that, you know, first of all, big corporates have the NIH syndrome, which is like not invented here, you know. Yes, <laughs> ego. <laughs> I didn't say it can't be true. So, so that's that's true, and and uh, that that will be all the time, you know. And I think modesty is the name of the game, you know. And I, I also don't consider myself as a brilliant person, honestly. And this is why I'm. This is why I embrace AI, honestly. Yeah. And 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 I think you know part of it is uh, modesty. And if you come modest into the table and honestly believe in your tools, uh, this is a key factor. And I don't brag with it. I I just think it it's it's the tools. Um, and uh, the, the second one, remind me, sorry, the second. Uh, uh, the second one was, um, I, I said ego. The other one is how long does it actually take to be implemented right. and will it be disruptive to my, right. uh, you know, day-to-day -day business? Right, right, right. And, and this is a problem because, you know, uh, multiple systems is a huge problem for a lot of, a lot of organizations. They found themselves in separate like uh, lakes of data. You know, some of them don't even consolidate that and they have like, separate lakes of data. And so in that sense, it is a problem, but we claim not to substitute any of those systems, but just to help take decisions on top of those systems. So it's kind an of- An overlay, it's an overlay. It's go on top of the pile and just 
be be there for you to to decide what to do with those you know with the data points so that that's and that's where we want to stay at, at you know we, we don't want to substitute those legacy systems which won't anyway change for the big corporates um for the small companies it's a different story but for the big corporates it'll yeah, and that's why we also work with oracle microsoft sap to try and develop those relationships with the customers who already have those systems in place and we want to adjust it um cycles are not short and logistics but at the same time uh you can bring value very fast so if you have a trusty uh, organization which signs with you obviously and on ndas and we obviously give great importance to data security uh there could be a very quick cycle that we can come back to the uh, to the company with results and this is re really what changes and these are like this is the method to work on a, on a small mvp which doesn't involve a lot of messing with you know planning and specifications but just give us data and we'll prove you what we can and let's discuss on this data and evolve from there because we're going to see some interesting things both of us and and what I really love is to come back with something that you know they didn't see before or, or they didn't have any clue or enlightening moment where where it's not me you know it's the tools that I bring but the, the way the way you lay out they understand okay if he knows that you know then you know you you got the key and let's let's continue to work together this is kind of the process at a certain stage it's already automatic and no need to no need to touch. It just works behind perfectly. You need to retrain it every month because reality changes, but that's what will keep us a good SaaS company. But that's, a, no, but that's exactly it. I mean, you have to keep on feeding the beast, but only if you do that, the, the evolution can continue. So it's yeah. not static. And I think this is what I love so much about it. It is, uh, you know, it is fluid. It continuously is expanding, learning, becoming a better person, a better system with whatever. And the other thing, if I hear you right, Ravi Fitch, I think if I was a small company, I'd be thinking about, hey, it doesn't matter. Uh, I am digital. It doesn't matter how little data I have, but I can pull out something more in terms of value from what I have right now. And this is where you move in and say, okay, just show us what you have. And we are certain to make one plus one become three already with that. And then the return on, on that kind of action, the reaction, if that cycle is, hey, I just pivoted or I just analyzed whatever data you had, and it gives already an you know better time efficiency, a higher margin, or just a better planning of your staff, for example. Yeah, then of course that's already my first bingo. Uh, and oh, you have something else for me to show? Show me, show me, show me. I love it. I'll give an example. I'll give it. Yeah, give me an example. All right. And, and let's say you're an organization that runs cargo, uh, yeah. uh, cargo activity. Okay, and 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 through this cargo activity, you want to understand. Uh, what happens in your organization in terms of, so this is a good example of me getting data over an organization. Here it's like all like uh, uh, data with, without names uh, or, or, uh, or meaning. Yeah, but, it's like in the medical industry. So whatever yeah, data you take from about, your partners is kind of anonymous, but it is data to be, to be used. Yeah. This is about critical air, air, air flight, like cargo shipments mm -hmm. or, or, or any shipment that could Jesus. take <laughs> and, and And you want to analyze your activity and you want to see as a business owner, like what's going on in your business. And this is the first thing we really do is to, to, to put your data in a way that until now was like in Excel sheets or spreadsheets. And now you can see for every client, you know, his own story and mm -hmm. get it on his own like report or share it also mm -hmm. with the clients have the ability to understand your profitability and margin on each client or or uh, so you you can you can know for each client also the exact places that he went to and you can cut it and slice it through and understand your activity it's all about uh, understanding what your data will uh, will bring yeah. in the future uh, the other thing is to predict what will be your uh, demands um we also do uh understanding um so so the also the idea of just basically to uh have a, a, a controllability over your actions and then from there on you can understand you know 
who is your best client that you should continue to work with uh, and which and your detox your detox also in terms of you know toxic suppliers because they're either always too late or what have you or those clients yes. that pay too late and you have a cash flow issue with them every single time all of this can be seen and you can understand you know why you're like why are you and your profits are increasing in terms of the you know the AI will tell you what what makes the more profit than others like maybe the, the weights of your packages are more profit maybe it's the client the specific client that is more profitable than other the clients and then it gives you an idea of you know of, of where to go and, and mitigate AI into the organization so this is the first stage that that we, we we do with the organization and it gives a lot of help and we also leave it with the organization so it's sort of a scoreboard to the success that we we do during, during the process. And, and and the tools behind can be the tools like I showed you before allocation of, of missions um, prediction of of uh, of what will happen in the future but this is the some example of what happened when a trusty organization gives us his data and we come back with a, a good perspective and uh, analy- analytics to help him m- mitigate problems with the AI and So it's like a two phases, kind of two phases. You don't want to throw AI on everything. You want to understand and you know you want to understand what you're going to heal here. And is it going to have an ROI justification, right? Are you going to actually return your investment? So this is really helps us in, in doing that. And I hope you got a glimpse of it. Oh, no, more than a glimpse. And I tell you, <laughs> I have learned so much myself, even though having been involved with your company you now for quite some time, it's been amazing. And, you, and, and as you were just saying, Raviv, you know, you don't want to throw AI on everything. And I just thought, yeah, well, hang on, you know, the best things are. For humans potentially best and I had a very long conversation with our partners at Fargo Global about that is for example dating apps you know if you have an algorithm that you and I we not only meet but we hit it off and we have a 99% chance of actually staying together until death does us part that's great but That's time efficient, that's life efficient, that's money efficient, that's a lot more fun than you know falling in love with the wrong person going through trauma for 10 years and then having a very expensive exit, right? Absolutely, absolutely and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure uh, but I, I had I just had a loss of a friend last year and a good friend from cancer and it was a very good friend also named Raviv. And I was discussing with his wife. We just had the memorial and, and, and we heard his phone calls and she heard his voice and she was so excited about it. We, I recorded some of his phone calls and there's an app that allows you to talk to your dear ones using like um, AI agent, but with your voice and if you have a picture. And I was wondering, is that good or not? And you know, and I'm still not and I'm not I'm not deciding, you know, I, I can't decide. I can't decide honestly. It's, it's, it's very it's very individual. Could be constructive could be destructive, right? Yeah. so but, but at the same time, I, I was thinking to myself uh, that if he could tell tell her to you know continue with her life and you know with his own voice, maybe it's you know, maybe it's quite nice. <laughs> it, it reminds me, you know, I've, it's I've... like I, maybe that's the edge, right? Maybe that's the edge where we shouldn't play with. Yeah, you can be <laughs> exactly. That's you like, you know, where is it becoming macabre? Where, you know, where's the line? But I've just watched a fantastic... Maybe it's a medium, by the way. Maybe it's a medium. Maybe it's like, a medium. Maybe, maybe it's a medium. Maybe it's just a medium for, you know, for... And again, yeah. there we come back to the tool because I've just watched this fantastic documentary on Netflix. It's called the uh, Andy Warhol Diaries. okay And Andy Warhol kept a diary, but he kept a phone diary where he called his assistants for ye- assistant for years just telling her what he was doing, how he was feeling, how what he thought about the people. And it was an AI system that took his voice that has been recorded many, many times in interviews, or whatever, and had the system, Use the words that were then used in the um, in the diary he was speaking and and uh, also writing. And basically that's that's his voice as if he was telling you his diaries, reading his own diary out, and that was thanks to an AI system. So 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. There's like two techniques <laughs> talking about how amazing that is. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm boring. <laughs> but I don't think so. Uh, Ravi, Sorry, last one. One step, uh, one step. <laughs> one step ahead, exactly. But well, last one to conclude our fantastic conversation. So tell us um, in, in three maybe concepts, where do we go from here when it comes to smart logistics? What you know, does every element out there need to need to take into consideration and embrace, as you were saying before, be it me as a producer of any kind of good or me as a logistics company and me, maybe even as, you know, the client, uh, the, the customer at the end of that logistical system? So I think it's going to be an interesting uh, adventure. <laughs> honestly, I honestly think it's going to be, and not all of it is uh, obviously known, and this is what what is the fun of doing, you know, startups? It's, you know, you un unveil the road. Uh, and, but I think it's going to be very interesting and it's going to be part of it is going to be very cruel. Sorry to say, sorry to say. And I told you that, you know, who will not, those who will not embrace those tools will not stay. And, and, but it's going to be for the best of benefit of all of us, it's going to be great. One of my statements, by the way, is to do good for the world. In, in in my more moral compass yes. so so i think it's going to be it's going to be good for us as as a humanity in terms of helping us provide ourselves with everything uh, health food and uh, all the necessities that we need and these tools are so needed within the industries and we're going to see them in the next uh, let's say three years it's going to start to elevate and then it's going to ex explode And, and I think the days that, you know, uh, are coming really near, I can almost feel it uh, that uh, we, we will provide tools that will help a lot of logistic companies to sleep well at night. Basically, this is kind of the statement that I would like to have a peace of mind and sweep, sleep well at night. I think they deserve it. And this is the way I see it. And there's going to be a lot of companies who are going to be successful. It's huge. Like you said, it's a huge, huge, huge market. I think competition is, you know, is not the name here. There's so, there's so much space. There is so much space for a, a startup companies to go in here and change the game. Um, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I, th I think you're, you're absolutely spot on. And I like your approach. Whatever you do, you try to make it also good for humanity. And if I even only think about the CO2 footprint that logistics has, literally because we are such a globalized world and people are sourcing local more and more, but even the last mile, you know, if you have it done by cars or by e-bikes is again, a very, very different thing that you need to plan and you have to look at uh, in a different way. So yeah, it, it definitely is uh, an approach that I love. Raviv, Yachom, thank you so much for our fantastic conversation. Uh, a pleasure to be part of your journey as an investor and as somebody that really also from a personal point of view is totally involved and taken by the technology and by what you're doing at Amphorica. Thank you so much, Patricia. It was a pleasure to talk to you and pleasure to work with you. Uh, I'm so glad I met you. <laughs> And thank you, my dear Mentory TV community, for having joined me yet again for another conversation on smart logistics. You already had the co-founder and CEO of Emphorica on the show. This time I was joined by Raviv Yatom. He is the co-founder and CTO of Emphorica. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we kind of showed you why logistics is super exciting because of its technology, the evolution of AI and of Of course, it's nothing but a tool that runs in the background to make things just easier for you and I and anybody that wants to enjoy life. So see you next time. Until then, stay curious. Bye.